Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, this quiet town in the north central part of the state comes alive when the four-wheel and off-road jamboree comes to town. But crashing the trucker's party will be the monsters with their own fun and games. Snake Bite, The Grave Digger, and Andy Brass and Bigfoot are but a few of the party animals doing the monster mash in Bloomsburg. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the superstars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Nationals Monster Truck Challenge. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. Today we come to you from the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania for the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Summer Nationals. For most of the year, Bloomsburg is a nice, quiet college town in north-central Pennsylvania. But one weekend out of the year, it turns into a trucker's paradise. Hundreds of trucks of all different styles, shapes, and sizes show off their wares as they cruise up and down Main Street in the heart of town. It's a scene reminiscent of Bike Week in Daytona. Only here in the Keystone State, it's a four-wheel, not a two-wheel happening. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee here in the Grandstand, and today's main event is not the trucks on Main Street. It's the monsters here at the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds. And with more on that, let's go trackside to Army Armstrong. Well, Gary, one weekend a year, the beautiful rolling hills of Pennsylvania are literally overrun with the roar of the monster trucks, and this is that weekend. We're going to tell you some of the stories going on behind the scene at the Super Jamboree event that takes place as people from all over the eastern part of the country have shown up. The big stories are the Kill Devil Hill Grave Digger. Lyle Hancock driving Dennis Anderson's truck is going to try to play the role of the spoiler. Keep an eye open for those two red lights. That's a sign he's 100%. Speaking of 100%, Mopar, Chrysler Performers people have hooked up with Barefoot, Bray Schaefer. They want their first win. Is it going to happen today in Bloomsburg? We're going to find out. But one of the big stories of the year is over my shoulder. Bigfoot, Bob Chandler's operation have come up with Bigfoot number 10, but they still have yet to put that first win together. Will it take place today? We're not going to know until the afternoon is over. But the big story right now and of the year is the truck behind me. When he first came out, a lot of people thought it was a joke. Believe me, Colt Cobra is no joke. Mask and all, this guy is a player. Keep an eye on him. He'll be a big dog before the day's over. And that's only four of the trucks. Remember, we got the Dirty Dozen. Twelve of the best trucks in the country are coming your way next, Gary. And here's how they match up for round one. The fast qualifier, Snake Bite, against the seventh fast qualifier, Nightmare. Then it's Grave Digger against UFO, the tenth fast qualifier. Bigfoot 10, Andy Brass against Tropical Thunder with Wayne Smozanic. The Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter, going up against No Problem. Also, King Crunch will take on American Made in round one. And Barefoot, Fred Schaefer against a new truck, Overkill, the eighth fastest qualifier. And there is a look at Lyle Hancock in the Grave Digger, the 1950 panel wagon of Dennis Anderson. One of the most popular trucks on the circuit. Just take a look at all the Grave Digger t-shirts up in the grandstand earlier this afternoon. Army Armstrong cut up with Lyle Hancock. Anytime you step up and go into the driver's seat of another established vehicle, there's got to be a lot of pressure on you. Lyle, you took Dennis Anderson's place on the circuit. Tough shoes to fill? Man, I tell you what, he must wear number 15 because everybody in that grandstand is expecting nothing but the best out of this truck. And sometimes it's real hard to fill those shoes as you're putting it. Um, we always go out there and try to do the best show we can. And the number one thing we always got in mind is no matter what happens out there, the people in the grand sense are the most important things to us. We always make sure we do the best show we can for them. Good thought to remember as we take a look at UFO. This is showbiz, Army Armstrong. Gary, you're exactly right. He's showbiz until the light goes green. And Bob Fisher's going to prove that. He teamed up with Cunningham Competition to try to find the horsepower to beat the Grave Digger. New Jersey in a far lane. The red light bandit from Kildale Hill, North Carolina, in the near lane. Gary, first run of the day. Lyle Hancock, the 1950 Chevy paddle wagon, and he gets the whole shot. He cuts a good line. Look at the air time as he takes the victory. Gary, it's amazing. The chassis on the truck seems to be working perfect off that right lane. It's not touching the cars a bit. It seems to be clearing everything. I think the Gravedigger may have the hot setup. Well, watch him cut this good light right here. He got the whole shot, and he won it right there at the start. A lot of air time. Now let's go down and talk to Lyle Hancock. 
Larry, I know you weren't here last year, but everybody found out the right lane was the place to be. I think it took you just this one run to find out that's the place to be this year, too. I actually, I watched everybody running over there in the left lane yesterday, and by chance, the way we drew the numbers on it, I got to pick the right lane to make my qualifying. And my first pass wasn't very good. I missed the second set of cars, but, you know, it's like anything else. You gotta get a little used to the track. It felt good today. We made a gear ratio change last night, and I was actually leaving the line too hard last night, so I was putting the truck load out of shape. But you've seen it out there. I mean, it felt good. John Moore, the cockpit of no problem as round one continues. We're coming back. Stay with us. We're in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, where four trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Summer Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Hi, everybody. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong. Round one competition continues. Gary Porter is going to be coming up against John Moore, and I want you to notice the front end of these trucks. Moore's truck is set up real loose, okay? I'm going to point it out to you. When the light goes green, it takes horsepower to raise the front end of Moore's truck up. That is a disadvantage right now with the new chassis set up. I talked about Moore's truck, then come across and look at the truck closest to us, Gary Porter. When that light goes green, the front end stays down and the truck goes forward. So what I'm telling you, they're still trying to get the chassis dialed in on the Ford. The raise, see it, is costing horsepower. That allows Porter to get out just TT to take the win. Well, of course, Gary Porter has a truck he has worked with with a couple of seasons. John Moore has a brand new racing vehicle, and it's going to take some time to work out the bugs and get that suspension and chassis to work. Exactly. Notice how much lift there was in the front end. Well, the truck is designed to lift. Matter of fact, that design comes from off-road racing out of the Baja California circuit, but they've got to tweak it a little bit more, Gary, to get it to work on these 10,000-pound monster trucks. Fast qualifier coming up, the snake bite. There is a look at Nightmare. Kirk Dabney out of northern Indiana, Fort Wayne, Indiana, the northeastern quadrant of the state. And there is the man from Cobra Creek, Colorado, Colt Cobra, in the snake bite. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people thought, hey, this is kind of a little facade here. No, this guy is for real. He built this truck solely to show that he could build one of the quickest fours in the country. Earlier today, he proved it. Look how smooth he is when he wings it. To the quick qualifying time. Here the throttle wing when he was in the air. Well, the reason they do that is they want to hit the ground with the wheels pulling forward. You can't just get up in the air and just full throttle and then you'll blow an engine. But what they do is they burp the throttle and they hit the ground just like an airplane with the wheels pulling it. That actually pulls the truck into the ground gear. It's a safe way to drive them on. There is a look at Snake Bite round one, the fast qualifier. He takes the victory over Nightmare and Kirk Dabney. So as we look to round two, Snake Bite knocking out Nightmare will take on the Gravedigger, a victor over UFO. Also in round two, Bigfoot, Andy Brass. That's Bigfoot 10. He'll take on uh, Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher, who knocked out no problem. And uh, finally in round two, we have King Crunch, Scott Stevens, defeating American Made against Barefoot who knocked out Overkill. And Arma, you have caught up with Colt Cobra. Colt, the word we get is a 575 out of the right lane. Is that the place to be? I don't know, Army. You know, they spent a little bit of water in, the, in between the cars here earlier, so we ran pretty conservative. We qualified on the number one spot yesterday. We're feeling real good with the right lane. The left lane still got that dip in it. It kind of spooks everybody from last year. So if we can help it, we're going to stay away from it. But, you know, right now, everybody's chasing us. And here's a look at the veteran drag racer, Fred Schaefer. That is a Dodge truck. That is barefoot. And we're going to go back now a bit earlier this afternoon to round one competition as he took out a new truck, Overkill, driven by Steve Hess. Hess comes out with a brand new concept. And you can tell real quick that Fred Schaefer's no drag racer. He literally knocks over the tree. You know, he had a truck link lead before the first set of vehicles, but not going to be that easy now. Scott Stevens in the auto value vehicle knows Fred is going to be dead on that tree. Scott out of Woodlands, Texas, but he's actually moved his Operation Army to Indianapolis, Indiana to be more centrally located. And this is a look earlier and round one against American Made. The American Made truck out of Tucson, Arizona. First time on a tour with us. Not a bad running truck, but Stevens moves over into the next round. The kid out of Arizona, he might be a player before the year's over. But right now, both the players are on the line, one in a GMC and the other one in a Dodge. So it's Barefoot and King Crunch. Once again, we have seen from round one action how well Fred Schaefer cut that light. Oh, he drilled that tree. Look at here. Again, good start. 
He won it once again at the light. Reflexes. Man, reflexes. But that big Mopar, that big Dodge engine is making all types of horsepower. And you know it's interesting. They don't run any type of coolant in that vehicle. It's self-contained cool. Here's a guy that keeps the competition hot. Coming up, more competition featuring Bigfoot. Welcome back to Bloomsburg as competition continues here at the fairgrounds and there is a look at the latest from the Bob Chandler Bigfoot family that is Bigfoot number 10 but still looking for victory number one this season Andy Brass out of St. Louis Missouri the two frame race truck and this is what happened earlier in round one he went up against Wayne Slozanic Tropical Thunder well, this shows us exactly how quick Andy Brass is in that starting tree that truck designed to lift a lot Horsepower was not taken away from him one bit. He went to the other end like a rocket, Gary. So now we are in action. Round two. Carolina Crusher, Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina in the Chevrolet. He has certainly been a force the past couple of seasons. And he will stage against Big Blue, Bigfoot, the Ford of Bob Chandler out of St. Louis, Missouri. Gary Porter is your defending champion in this series. So he would love nothing better than to do it two years in a row. But Andy Brass, not going to have a bit of that. Look at here. Once again, we emphasize how important it is to cut a good light, and right there, he underscored that. Andy Brass is, you know, we've got a truck named Snake Bite, but Andy Brass today has Snake Bite-like reflexes. Look at that. But he's not powering real big over the first jump either. You notice that, Gary? As we see Andy Brass put Gary Porter on the trailer, we have two trucks we've talked about earlier on the sidelines. Both Snakebite and Gravedigger are out of the competition following a freak occurrence in the second round. Both trucks broke at almost the same time. It was really interesting. They both go to the starting line literally on full kill. Neither one was going to roll over for the other one. They came off the line so hard, both trucks at the same time exploded their transmission. Gary, in order to win a race, you got to finish it. Neither vehicle did. So that brought up a unique situation where the two quick losers from the previous round who thought they were out, they're back in, and those guys are out now. Well, now we'll take a look at the semifinal matchups. Right you are, an unusual situation. The second fast loser, King Crunch, against the fast loser, Carolina Crusher, and then Bigfoot and Barefoot. And from those four, we will have a winner here at Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. A most unusual situation here as we take a look at uh, some of the other trucks on display because these jamborees offer a host of activities for the truck lover as well as the entire family. And to find out more, call a right, the special events promotion company. And there is a look at Gary Porter. Once again, he is back because of uh, the breakage of a couple of trucks. So we have Gary Porter, the second fast loser from round two, against your fast loser, the auto value King Crunch of Scott Stevens. Now, for all intents and purposes, both of these guys were back in the back. They had their helmets off, their neck braces off, and all of a sudden they said, hey, you're back in. So they had to jump back in the truck. Neither one expected to be here, but one is going to the final. Which one's it going to be? Will it be out of Carolina, or will it be out of the new Indianapolis-based operation of Scott Stevens? Very even at the start, but it looks like Gary Porter by a fender, and Gary Porter does indeed advance to the finals. Gary Porter out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, in the Carolina Crusher, knocking out the auto value King Crunch. Well, it's amazing. To, you know, the finish line, just to give you a little information, the finish line of the monster truck is located six feet in the air. Why? Look at the finish line here. If you had the lights on the ground, they would have literally flown completely over. Both trucks fly to the finish line right here. And it's by a wheel that Gary Porter wins. But look at this, Army. Gary is being towed back to the paddock area. We could have another interesting turn of events because he has found a spot in the championship if that truck's not broken. Yeah. You know, it's really amazing. If the Jamborees, everybody comes loaded for bear, and Porter may not get a shot at this one. Let's find out. No love lost. As a matter of fact, I'll be up front. These guys just don't like each other. One in a Dodge, one in a Ford. Let's just watch this one. It'll be a street fight. And Andy Brass. Oh, you call it. No, I can't. That's a photo finish. We'll wait for the officials. Last George Carpenter who won that one. Wow. The fans don't know. They're waiting as well. There's a look at uh, Fred Schaefer in barefoot. Let's look again. Both trucks run the soft suspension. Notice how they both settle. Now they can really make the horsepower work for them and literally fly to the finish. 
And right there, you can see by that margin, Andy Brass takes the victory. He's with Army. Right now, Gary, we got Andy Brass. Andy keeps going quicker and quicker, but something unique here. Left lane. You sat and studied it. You figured something out that everybody else couldn't. What was it? Uh, I can't really say really about the lane. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference. I think it's just a lot of the guys' minds. You know, we knew Fred that if he got it come down to us and him, he was going to pick the right lane. We was going to have to run the left. We tried. We run left in qualifying. We didn't do bad, so we figured we just got to pull a hard run on left lane. Just have to stand in it and not let out of it. But the big question now is, can Gary Porter get his starter replaced? He's earned a spot in the championship against Bigfoot. But the work continues on the Carolina Crusher. We'll come back and see what happens in the championship round. Welcome back to Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, where Ford Trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Summer Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. What a most unusual day we have had here today. And I don't know if you can figure it out. You need a scorecard for sure. Here's Army with more on that. Gary, a little deja vu. Barefoot and Bigfoot in the final. We just saw it. Yeah, but they're going to come back and do it again because Barefoot was a quick loser from the previous round. Gary Porter was supposed to come out of a bracket and be a winner. He lost the starter. They tried to put it back together. There's a time in this sport, okay? They took all the time they had. The Bigfoot team let them have all the time they wanted. Okay, Meanwhile, Fred Schaefer and Barefoot was just like an old bear. He was sitting back in the back waiting for something to go wrong. It went wrong. He's going to the final. Can Dodge take their first win? Let's find out right now. They're on the line. Well, you talk about Dodge taking the first win. Remember, this is the Bigfoot number 10. This is the latest two-frame truck as we take a look at Fred Schaefer and Barefoot. But this particular truck has yet to win. So it's going to be a first-time winner this afternoon. And I explained to you in the previous round, there's no love lost between these guys. They're going to rerun each other, but, Gary, there is one. Now Andy Brass has lane choice, and he goes over to the rain that Barefoot was in just a minute ago. There's a look at the semifinal round when it was so close, but Andy knocked out Fred. Andy takes the victory by just a few feet to advance. And he was to go up against Gary Porter in the Carolina Crusher. Gary Porter again be Bigfoot and Barefoot, but as you have mentioned, they have flip-flopped the lane. Very close to the second set of cars, and it's Barefoot. Fred Schaefer takes oh, the Gary, victory. Gary. But there was some slight contact. Now, is that going to be a problem? Yes, definitely. The rule is you cannot cross into the other man's lane to make contact after the finish line. Let's see if the official saw that. Dodge may have won the battle, but I believe they lost the war. Okay, the replay's coming up. Is there contact after the finish line? Is there an imaginary center line that the truck will cross over? You make the call. Right, right here, you can see that Fred Schaefer does indeed win by a fender. That's the battle. Let's look again. They're coming right at you. Now, keep in mind, there's an imaginary center line between those two lanes. Fred, after he crosses the finish line, crosses that imaginary line and actually makes very slight contact there. And there is, that's the war. He there is Greg Fuchs down there right now talking to Fred Schaefer, and he is being told right now, hey, you've been disqualified. That is the ruling that we are getting right now. Once again, after the finish line, Schaefer crosses that imaginary center line right here and makes ever so slight contact. Let's go down to Army. Well, when we started the show, we were talking about two teams that we knew were literally hungry for a win here at Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. One of them was the Dodge, that's Fred Schaefer. The other was Andy Brass and Bob Chandler's Bigfoot. Fred Schaefer, when it came down to the end, you went across the finish line first, but the word we get, DQ, the wind's going to go the other side. How does that make you feel? Uh, not real well, uh, Army. They said that I crossed the center line down there in the grass and touched Andy, and uh, I told them there was no center line down there visible, and uh, I think I did touch Andy. But uh, that's the way the call is, and I'll, I'll go with that. All right, you kind of live by the rules, and you die by the rules like a true gentleman. I know he is. That's the way he's going to take it. But Andy Brass, on the other side of the coin, you guys have worked awfully hard all year long. Hadn't been good luck this year, but luck did play a role today, and you're going to luckily take a win out of here. Yeah, we have. You know, the truck's not been running the greatest for us. We've been having a lot of problems with it. We've been changing a lot of things. We come out here today, it seemed to run a lot better. We was doing, making some changes to the truck. Truck started coming along to us. We went all the way into the finals, got up against Fred there. You know, Fred laid down a good run. He's been running real hard all year, you know, and everybody's running real good. We got down to the end. We did lose a round, but at the, as it come down to the rule, 
Fred end up and touch this after the finish line, and they say you can still you can cross the finish line. They don't have no problems with that. But when you cross the finish line and run into the other guy, they're going to DQ you, and that's what happened to Fred today. You know, and then it's kind of interesting because both of these guys would much rather just win it on an all-out race. But Gary, it's amazing that the old rule book played a role in this thing. But I will tell you one thing: keep watching the show on Saturday and Sunday because this war is not over by a long shot. You know it, and I know it, and I guarantee you they know it. Back to you, Gary. What a most unusual day here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. You couldn't leave your seat because things kept changing all the time. Our congratulations to Bigfoot and, of course, Andy Brass. For Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. We'll see you next week for another edition of Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news of an exciting video release from Diamond Peace Force.